it's freezing outside and we're about to go into this crawl space. Why? Two reasons. In the south, a lot of the homes have crawl spaces and they need dehumidifiers. We have one of those, but recently it overflowed. The condensation was backed up. We had a leak. We didn't know about it until months later. Reason number two for going down here is we got this Genie sensor from the Home Depot Seeds program. This video will tell you more about it. Thanks to the Home Depot Seeds program, today we're looking at the Genie water and flood sensor. This is one of those smart app devices that will let you know if there's water or flooding occurring somewhere in your house. You simply place the sensor in a location that could be prone to flooding and it will send you a warning via your app to let you know something's wrong. Opening the box reveals a manual, a packet that contains two screws, two anchors, a remote sensor, and the main sensor along with a little 3M tape so you can attach the holder which snaps off. You can attach this holder to the 3M tape and tape that somewhere or you can use the screws to screw it in someplace and attach it that way or you can just lay it down. You can just use the large sensor or you can plug in the remote sensor and that actually attaches to the base unit that holds the large sensor. So you see these probes here? They line up with the base and that's how the remote probe communicates with the main unit. Now this uses Wi-Fi. This device is up in the 2.5 gigahertz for Wi-Fi, not the 5 gigahertz. So you have to have 2.5 availability of Wi-Fi for this to work. Of course, you also need the range of the Wi-Fi. So depending on where you put this in your home, it may not work with your Wi-Fi system. Uh, in order to use this, you can either use the sensor just attached to the base, or you can attach the remote sensor, and that plugs into the base. And the base actually has little contact which mate with the back of the main unit so that the remote sensor can talk to the main sensor. You can use this or that, doesn't matter. One of the things you'll want to do is get your cell phone or smart tablet and download the app and that'll allow you to configure the app to the device so that they can talk. And this comes off by simply just turning counterclockwise a little bit. And you have built-in battery, which is removable, so you can actually you can actually replace this lithium three volt battery. There's a reset button there that you'll press to connect your smart device to the sensor. According to the manual, there is no notification other than through the app. Though I do see what appears to be a little speaker here. So I'm wondering if that's just for setup indications because this light is also incorporated to just set up and pair to your smart device. Or if it makes a sound when it detects water. That would be great for those who are in the vicinity of the unit who don't happen to have the app. So to install this, first thing we're gonna have to do is pull this little tab out so that the battery is actually connected. Two, we're gonna to have to download that app, which I've already done. Launch the app. You register yourself on the app. I just have to log back in. Once you're logged in, you probably won't see this. I already have two of their devices, two lights. But we can add our device to it. So we're gonna go and look for something called Smart Sensor. Now, again, there's a button on this unit right next to the speaker and you're going to push that button for about six seconds. It 
and the light's still not flashing quickly. So we're going to try that again. There we go. So that confirms that we have our light. So we say yes. I tell it that I am connecting to my network. And then we patiently wait. And now it's connected to the device. We hit done. This is what our device is called. And now it can give me a history of what's happened with the device, notices, and an important thing, the battery status level by pushing that button. This will allow it to communicate with me when the battery is low and when there's been a leak detection. So that's the notification that I will get. Okay, so this unit should be ready to trigger an alarm. So let's do a test. We have our app ready to alert us. We have our sensor. I've put the remote probe down there. Let's see what happens when we get a flood. We get an alert almost instantly. And yes, this does beep, which is great. And let's look here. And it says that there is a leak detection. So now, what happens if I release the water? The alarm stops. I'm impressed. I think I really like this product now. Things that I like about this product are, it's small and compact size. It's easy to install with a choice of taping it position, screwing it in, or placing it where you think water might be a problem. In addition, the sensor probe allows you to place the base unit closer to your Wi-Fi and the probe near the area that you're concerned with. And finally, it has dual warning on your app and an audible tone. Things I would be concerned with are Wi-Fi. One, the range. If it's too far from your router, it won't work. Two, it needs to be on a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Battery. While the app will alert you when the battery is low, you'll still have to change it, maybe once or every other year. In my case, I have to crawl back into that crawl space. The alert tone is weak, especially in my situation where it's in a totally different area from the house. We probably won't hear it, so we're relying totally on the app. Price. The unit is a little bit pricey at about 30 bucks, but that could be cheap compared to the amount of damage that flooding could do to an apartment or a house if left unchecked. Finally, it's just one more app to add to your cell phone or tablet. Now that you've seen the video on this, let's actually install this in our crawl space. Camera person, you go first. <laughs> so we're finally down here at the dehumidifier. And the problem I had initially was that this line here clogged up with gunk. So because this water would not discharge, it just backed up, overflowed, and flooded this whole area until we discovered it a couple of months later. Now with this device, all I have to do is lay out the remote sensor in the lowest area, which would be about here. And I'm going to put this sensor up a little higher, only because I know that the router is in that direction and it's about midway through the house, so this will give this device a better chance of receiving Wi-Fi. And we're all set. It's already on. We've installed the app. So now it's going to monitor for wetness and flooding and protect our crawl space. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. Join our subscription team. They're the ones that keep the commercials out of the middle of these videos. And as always, Thank you ever so much for watching.